Hello, welcome back to the garden again. Now the red cabbages that we sowed last month are now ready to go in the ground. It's a variety called red drumhead. Now these don't take very long to become ready. Being planted in the ground now, we shall be picking these heads come November. Now, with most brassicas, I look to leave 18 inches between them each way, which is what these are. All except things like the sprouts, the purple sprouting broccoli that we put down, they get very tall and large plants and really heavy cropping. So I like to give them a minimum of two feet, more if you can give them. And that's your red cabbages, Mrs W, in the ground. Lovely, thank you very much. And like I say, we shall be looking to harvest those sometime in November. Now, there's much excitement in our household this weekend because tomorrow, on the Sunday, is our third grandchild's christening, young Rosie. So we're all looking forward to that. Mrs W's got to get in and prepare some things. Food wise. So I thought what we'd do today is that's the it's the very end of July. We'd have a nice tour around the garden. Just to see where we are. And of course, all of you that are growing your celeriac along with us. I'm sure you want to see how ours are getting on. I do like to periodically just check over the plants and just make sure that their overall health is okay and just to keep an eye on what the harvests are looking like. I don't know if you remember but I think on the last garden tour these butternuts that are here they're really tiny less than sort of three quarters of an inch long but now they're starting to look more familiar just like butternut squashes and it could well be the case that with these, we'll see as we go along that we might have to support them once they get to a certain size. Whereas with the curry on this side, we haven't had to. You can see that the stems are really quite thick and are holding on to them, and the plant is actually supporting its own squash. But I have a feeling that the Butternuts, they're usually far bigger and they might not hold their weight so well. But it'll be interesting to see what happens as these fruits develop. But certainly if we need to, then we shall just give them some support. The honey boot, unfortunately, the fruit that we had on it dropped off. We did say it wasn't looking so good. But we do have more that are coming, Mrs W, look. We do. I don't know if I could and I think there's one or two flowers that are starting to come now at the top here, so Yes. Well, look, it's you. a really strong plant, so I'm hopeful that we will get something from it. Yeah. So that's the pergola looking really good. Now in plot one, look at the size of some of these zabroon. They are huge, they're like footballs. So it looks like we're going to get plenty of harvest there, Mrs W. Yeah. They're starting to go over a little bit now, the leaves are, aren't they? So yes. I presume they're not too far away from harvest. 
Now, I did say on the seed packet that um, they're going to be ready for harvest sometime August, September, depending on when you sowed them, because I think the sowing window was from March to April. We sowed ours in March. Yeah. So, yeah, the fact that they're now starting to go over, yeah, we'll be harvesting those in the next week or so, won't we? And letting them join the other onions. By the way, I've had one or two questions about from people about how to cure your garlic and onions. Now, there are some older videos on our playlist where you can find out how we did that, but we will do an updated version of those videos for next year so that you can see exactly what we do. And we'll probably start and we'll show you exactly what we're going to do with these zabrun because they're the only alliums that are now left in any of the plots for us to be able to show you. Now, as you know, it's all changing. Plot one, we have the purple sprouting broccolis in, both the Rudolph and the claret. And then here we put a row of calabrese in. Again, they've recovered nicely since being put in. And of course, at the beginning, beginning of the video, you saw us putting in the red cabbage, a red drum head. Now, one thing we have been really pleased with this year is the celery. This is a variety called Golden Self Blanching. And we've had quite a few harvests from it already. And rather than picking the whole plant, we just pick what we want, don't we? Yeah, just the outer leaves for what we're using at the time. Yeah, and we let nature become our larder. Because she'll look after the developing stems. They will only get larger anyway. And when we, when we need a couple of sticks of celery to do a bit of flavouring, as I say, we just take them away from the outside. But what about the celeriac? Well, they're doing really well, and I hope, very much hope, that yours are too. If you look here, if I just, you can see the developing root, so it's on its way, we know there's a celeriac there, and that will only swell and get bigger as we get toward the end of August and into September. So it's really quite good to think that there is something there. Even these ones, Mrs W, that we put in quite late. Yeah, they seem as if they're, a little, they're catching up, aren't yeah, they? There's a little so bulb now forming there. Those. Yeah. So hopefully yours are exactly the same and just starting to see the same thing. If they're a little bigger, happy days. You know, don't, uh, don't just think that just because yours are a little bigger there's something wrong. Sometimes they are, sometimes they are. You know, they grow at different rates and different seasons depending on the rainfall you get, how much sunshine there is. These are in quite a bit of shade. But then I like to have them in a bit of shade if I can. Last year I grew them up in plot five under the canopy of the trees. It's better for these to be on the shady side as to be in the bright sunshine, otherwise you'll be forever lasting watering them. Because just like its cousin, the celery, they don't like to dry out. They like to be always damp. Never waterlogged, but always damp. But as you do start to see the bulb appear above the soil level, and that'll be because of swelling, then you do just want to remove the tops. Just so that you can start to see the top of the bulb. No more. Whatever you do, don't strip it. Otherwise, it won't be able to photosynthesize and it won't swell anymore. But the developing bulb does like to have and feel a bit of, a bit of sunshine. It does help it mature So, as we, especially as we start to get towards mid-August and late August, and certainly into September, just go around these once a week and, you know, as the bulb is expanding, of course, this bottom leaf will be closer to the surface, so then you can just take those off. Now, nothing much has changed in plot two. The potatoes are still here, but you see they're really starting to go yellow now and really starting to fall over. And um, we've had the odd one or two plants up when we've needed some larger potatoes um, and also so that we can see just how they are doing and they're looking really good certainly with the rain that we had during July and I actually heard somewhere that uh, it's been one of the wettest Julys on record but 
The potatoes don't mind that. Certainly helps them to swell up. And in plot three, I'm not going to take this cover right off. Oh, there's too many whites. Because there are quite a lot of whites about. <laughs> but what I will do is just get Mrs. W just to get in with a camera. Here I am actually inside the brassica tent. <laughs> but the sprouts are looking lovely, aren't they? Really healthy. Everything in here is looking really healthy. Yep, the curly kale curly is coming kale, on, isn't it? Yeah, Cavallo Nero. Yeah, and the sprouts. And they're in a much better state than they were last year. So they are definitely. I think I can start to see maybe the beginnings of some little sprouts. And of course, one other interesting fact that you've learned today is just how small Mrs. W is. <laughs> because although you can't see her, she's got the camera. I can show you she's actually standing up in <laughs> this. My head is touching tunnel. the net in, but. <laughs> <laughs> No, the uh, leeks are doing really well. They're not far away from, well, in fact, in some of the cases, they're actually hitting the top of the netting. So hopefully it's kept that allium leaf miner at bay and we shan't suffer with it. The brassicas to the front that we planted uh, earlier in July, you can see how much they've picked up and come on. You know, they were tiny little plants like that. You can see how large they are now. What I did want to do though, Mrs. W, is just check the uh, Swedes. Oh yes, let's have a quick Just to make sure they're all right. Haven't really looked at these two. Well, I haven't looked at them all really, have we, since... Uh... Oh, ho ho! Hang on, because I... Oh! Oh, that's, that is looking very promising. This could be the year that you get some <laughs> nice Swede. Swede, yeah! <laughs> No, honestly, we have grown some really lovely swede before. Um, but we have been a bit unlucky with it in some years. And to be quite honest with you, a lot of it is when we go on holiday, isn't it? Yes. The month we choose to go. Yeah. We went a lot earlier this year, didn't we? So that's yeah. good. <laughs> so plot three looking very, very good. And then, of course, the tunnel. Uh, it was only about, what? A week or so ago that these plants went in and if you can get in a bit close you can see they're really starting to rock it yeah the others aren't Nearly too far behind look two foot up that. No, that one's the one next door to it is yeah. so yeah they're really motoring up there yeah fingers crossed for those now you can see in plot four how well things are doing. If you remember, these plants were put in here to give us a harvest for September. And Mrs. W, if you just pop yourself over here, yeah. you can see they are bang on, ready to be harvested. Certainly by the end of August. Oh, look. look, those calibres. Yes. The heads Big are now calibres. forming. Lovely. The cauliflowers are starting to turn in, Mrs. W. In fact, I think there's a baby one in there now. Oh, good. By the looks of things, so yeah. This really is looking quite good and looking good for harvests during the month of September. You can see we're slowly getting through our carrots. We've done the first row in and actually we're sort of mm, a quarter to midway through the second row. The two rows that we sowed last month were at the beginning they're looking really quite good and yeah germination has been really good so looks like we're going to have some nice carrots for the autumn and winter period and this row that we're on at the moment is the uh, Amsterdam Maxi and we'd probably never choose really to grow those again would we no way on balance um, they're not an awful carrot but when we tasted it it was rather bland, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, it could. It had more of a carrot taste than the ones you can buy from your local supermarket. But compared to like the Norwich or the Eskimo that we grow, yeah. the taste was really quite bland. Yeah, we both did the taste test on the two at the same time, didn't we? To yeah. Now you can see where we put our Christmas potatoes. And uh, yeah, they're, I think they're going to be perfectly happy there. They're nice and sheltered. 
and they're not going to be too far away when we need to move them to bring them under cover to stop them being nipped by the frost. Now here in a greenhouse everything is looking in the main quite well. We've got peppers, in fact we've had several peppers already yes. this season. Now, that one's not far oh, yeah, away from being one's ready, look. Red now. Yeah, lovely. They look really healthy, the pepper plants do, don't they? They do, yeah. The look aubergines the aubergine, are now yeah. in production, so we're getting aubergine plants. Still waiting for the jalapenos to go red. Yeah, but they are a slower ripening one, I think. There's a lot on the, that one over there, isn't there? It's got many fruits on that one. And I like that because it's sort of a purpley black and they do go red, but they start out as a purpley black instead of a green, which is unusual. Now the plants that we grew, grew from seed, um, you can see their flowers are all there. I mustn't forget there is one already on that plant. <laughs> In fact, there's one or two forming on this plant now, look. Yes, yeah. And I noticed the, the um, individual one at the end that we bought, which was a new variety. There's, that one's got some on now too. Yeah. Next to you there on your left. Was it called Fantasia or something? I think it was, yes. And the tomatoes, they're looking really good. Um, it's not going to be too long before they start turning red. Some of them are already sort of on the turn towards the bottom of the plant. They aren't so green anymore, so it shouldn't be too long. And then behind me, of course, we have the cucumber plants. I was just counting on Mrs W's chalkboard. We've had 18 cucumbers so far, and I can still see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, there's still ten developing on the plant. There's two plants in there, so that's that's very, very good harvest from just two plants, isn't it? Yeah. However, I said most things are okay. The cucumbers are succumbing to the red spider mite at the moment, so what we're doing is once the leaves, once we spot the leaves are actually getting like this, and of course you can't strip the whole plant, but we're, we're going to cut these leaves off um, and then Mrs W really is coming here daily and giving them a good dosing of water uh, to try to get these mites off. In fact, I don't know if you can pick this up on camera, Mrs W, but you can see under here the, 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 the little web. You might have to get in really close. Oh yes, right, let me see. Hang on. I can see it, but whether I can film it, it's just there. And that's what they do, they sort of do spin a little web. There's another one, in fact you can probably see those ones. Just in the, can I film it? Now this raised bed of ours is really being really productive and I'm going to let Mrs W talk you through this because, well it's her baby really. As you can see this is very very packed with the salad veg and I think we probably overdid it a little bit when we did the planting. Um, got some lovely outdoor cucumbers now starting to form here, the market moor. Next to that are some tomatoes. My poor little marigolds are tucked in underneath, not quite knowing what to do where the sun is. And the lettuce, we've been having a lot of harvests from the lettuce. They've grown lovely. There have been yeah. so many harvests from these lettuces, haven't there? Beautiful green pepper forming there. We took two red ones off a couple of days ago when we had those. Actually, I was going to just say to you that I did have a question from somebody the other day regarding outdoor peppers. And yes. They weren't really doing that much, you know. And you said a little while ago that uh, you've probably got far too many things in here but I'm wondering really this pepper quite like the shelter of everything. Might do. I mean it, it seems happy in there doesn't it? Because the cold weather we get yeah. it's still keeping quite it's, warm isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It definitely its roots are sheltered because the, the soil is sort of about six inches down. The soil has actually dropped in here since we yeah. put it in hasn't it? It's settled quite a lot yeah. so. Um, but it, uh, also, this was one of our overwintered peppers, not one of our yes. start, sown seeds of this year. So it was already a little bit ahead of the game anyway. Yeah, it was already well advanced, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. Yeah, you're right. And I've, 
initially we started to try to train the cucumbers up some canes but we've actually taken the cane supports out and they're actually tumbling quite nicely over the edge they are of the bed um, aren't they yes the, nice cucumbers yeah, are starting to come they seem quite happy in there and by chance i i don't know if you remember but we put two little cucumber plants in because they looked so small we put two in each station so we've managed to do it so that we have one now coming over on, on this side and the other one is tumbling over on this side so that's quite lovely i think if not a little bit full <laughs> actually we've come around here we've got so many courgettes <laughs> i know this plant is loving life in here they seemed a little bit slow to get any fruit this year but now they've started they are there's many can i get in there yes i think yeah. so and again they're quite sheltered in there aren't they yeah it's got some lovely and i like the i like the um yellow courgettes different color on your plate if nothing else yeah <laughs> good aren't they yeah absolutely now, the old soft fruit is doing really well um, indeed, it's not going to be too long. Look before at the we top, get some. There's some blackberries now going yeah. red, aren't they? Yeah, they're there are. a bit red at the top, so they won't be too far away. No, and we still have many, many, <laughs> many raspberries. <laughs> Beautiful. Charlie it will is. be here later, so he'll be up here. Yes, he will. His dessert, I think. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong there. I noticed in my little bee hotel that we've had some leaf cutter bees in Fantastic. there look can you see yeah i can yeah there's not much in the top one although we did have a woodpecker come and you can see he's pecked yeah up there and he, he did take a lot of the bugs out of them um, or the uh he did take some of the food out of here as well I need to get a little frame around, I think, like a wire frame, so that can the bees can get in and the birds can stay out. <laughs> Mrs. W, do you know we have one, two, three, four cobs forming on this plant? Four? This one here, yeah. Blimey, it was only three. Look, one, one two, three, three four. four. Wow. And somebody They've did... grown a lot this week, haven't they? Yeah, they have. And somebody did ask us in the comments what variety we grew. Um, and it was early think, bird, wasn't it? These ones are early bird, yes. The other ones are swift. Yes. These are early bird. They're looking really healthy. They are. And they're actually yeah. producing good crops. Yes. Fingers crossed. Before the other ones produce on the bean tunnel, we may have a harvest of these ones first. But these are four or five weeks ahead of those, aren't they? Yes, they are, yeah. Now the great thing about this time of year is that clearly the conditions are so nice and warm that especially especially brassicas they germinate so quickly um, and these were the seeds that you saw on the last video which mrs w was sowing so the coal rabbi the kale the romanesco the, the winter sar the only one that doesn't appear to have come through yet is the orms kirk cabbage on yeah. the end there but we had that also last time around we didn't did. we it was so, poor germination probably yeah. the older seed maybe and the um, spring onions, we're still waiting for those to pop the heads through, but they probably won't be too long. No. No. So everything's looking good in there. Keep that closed up because of the old butterflies, they do like the small plants too. They certainly do. Look at that cabbage. Yeah, and this is a providence. That's the eventual size that they get. It is really amazing, really. Is, <laughs> That's lovely, yeah. lovely cabbage. Yeah. And they're ready to be harvested now. And indeed, they are going to be harvested because this now needs to be urgently prepared, plot five, for its new inhabitant. <laughs> That's a clue, is it? <laughs> That's as much of a clue as you're going to get for now. <laughs> Even these uh, calibres are still producing side shoots, aren't they? From, from... There's they quite are, a yes. few side shoots still coming from those. Amazing. 
they're a really good crop to grow. So yeah, we've got a bit of work to do in this plot. This is W. Yeah. This is where, of course, we're keeping all the alliums at the moment. They're under cover. They're nice and dry. The onions are getting there. Um, and you know, these shallots that we harvested earlier, of course, right at the beginning of July, you can see they're just about there. And it's just that end piece of the neck that just needs to get as dry as this. And then they can go into storage, can't they? Yes. We're going to use a different shed this year, aren't we? For... Yes. Um... One which has been especially prepared. <laughs> That's the state of play in our garden here in Norfolk of where everything is. We're just about, I think, managing to keep the pests at bay. Yes, there's the odd caterpillar, there's the odd eaten leaf. But you have to remember that this is an organic garden. We don't put any pesticides in this garden or in a greenhouse. In fact, nowhere in this garden do we use pesticides. It's all keeping it nice and tidy. Finding any caterpillars once we see that there's been some damage and getting rid of them. And just controlling just how many actually do actually get under the netting. So, but overall, the health of the garden is looking really, really good. It could be worse, Mrs. W. It could. <laughs> now, do let us know in the comments down below how things are going in your gardens. Are you seeing an increase in pests as we get to the end of July? It seems as though we've seen a huge amount. Suddenly, just it's just happened. <laughs> and they're not coming in the ones and twos. Um, you know, it's like we're being invaded. <laughs> Those cabbage whites have just been by tens and Yeah, by tens and twenties. They're just everywhere, aren't they? Yeah. So do let us know how you're getting on um, and how your plants are faring. We're not doing so bad. It has been quite wet. Hardly had to do any watering, really, at all only undercover so yeah it's been a completely different year to last year's growing season now you have some food to go and make don't you i do i'm a busy bee today <laughs> and i'd better make myself busy in harvesting the things that you're going to be needing lovely thank you have a great gardening week won't you guys oh by the way before i just go it's probably monday or it might even be tuesday when you see this video it's going to be a struggle to turn this around tomorrow, uh, simply because we're at Rosie's christening. So apologies for that. It will go back to normal the following week when you get your video out there on a Sunday evening. But yeah, as I was saying, have a great gardening week, won't you? We shall see you on the next one.